This man has returned to the Soviet Union. He happened to be on the battlefield. He had to flee to the trenches. The man said, he'd bring the Gatling Vulcan to support him later. But people here can see him or hear him. He was hit by bullets and wasn't hurt. He is invisible in this time and place. A man named Mikhail. He's a hard worker, who's made a name for himself in the business world. His father, who grew up in an orphanage, taught him from an early age not to love. Because love is a human weakness, his workers were about to enter the sand extraction plant when they were stopped by archaeologists because there were remains of warriors inside. They were heroes, but archaeologists need a lot of time for their work. They risked interfering with his interests. Mikhail made a deal with the project manager. When he puts on this hair, it's the signal for the start of the operation. An unmanned truck has crashed into the archaeologists. Afterwards, he'll say it was an accident. Afterwards, he goes to see Lisa, the head of the archaeological team and seduces her. He tries to convince them to leave. It's not enough to flirt with her. You have to act on it. Mikhail deliberately flirted with Lisa. The project manager saw this and took it as a signal to move. He started the driverless truck. Lisa and Mikhail went to the trenches and told stories about the soldiers. She shows him the papers of Soviet Commander Sarov, but the truck closes in and crushes them in the trench. Meanwhile, Mikhail returns to the German-Soviet war when it touches Sarov's papers. At that time, he sees Soviet commander Zara fighting Soviet soldiers. He also falls into the water with ambush soldiers and is frouncing to the bone. A Soviet soldier kills a German soldier and blood spurts over Mikhail. He is shot in the shoulder and, this time, the pain is palpable. With sure of dead, Mikhail returns to the press. A doctor treats him. Lisa is in the ambulance. It turns out that there was an error in their code. As a result, her project manager misinterpreted it. Lisa is saved and Mikhail has seen something terrible. If you go back to the war, would you hide to save your life? Or would you do what so many martyrs have done? You would have taken up arms and fought the enemy to protect your country. You would have been ready to sacrifice your life. The man watched his ancestors fight in the tornado. After fighting, he didn't have the courage to go back. But the next day, archaeologists found the identity of the boy's grandfather, Pavel, in a sand quarry. And when his hand grasped it, he went back in time to Pavel, the boy's grandfather. He went back in time to the German-Soviet battlefield. There, Mikhail sought his grandfather who had joined the army at the age of 16. The soldiers threw smoke bombs and crossed the river with weapons and ammunition. As they reached the center of the river, German bombers arrived. The bombs explode beside them, and people fall around them. The bodies of the soldiers were thrown into the river to save weight. After disembarking, he followed his grandfather, marching hard into the trenches because from the experience of the last crossing, in this time and place, he can only go back if his grandfather died in battle. At night, a flare lights up. Pavel and two other men set off to reconnoiter. One of his comrades was killed by a mine explosion while picking up barbed wire. Another was hit by shrapnel in both legs. They told Pavel to return to his position without him, but he risked his life to get his comrade back to his position. The medic said the wound was too severe, and there was no medical equipment. He had only two or three hours to live. Pavel asked if there was anything else he could do. The nurse told him to go to the field hospital on the other side of the river. But the ice on the river was too thin to move. Pavel wanted to take his comrades to the hospital. The commander told him he had to be back by dawn, or he would be treated as a deserter. Pavel dragged his comrade across the river. There were shells all around him. I don't know how long it took him to reach the other bank. On the way, he was hit by shrapnel in the head and blood was pouring out. Mikhail was impressed. Pavel couldn't rest. He was on his way home. On the way, he was hit by a shell. Behind him, Mikhail went to check on him. He was surprised that his young grandfather could see him. Mikhail gave his grandfather his identity card. But suddenly, he was gone again. In his heart, he was moved by the martyrs. Mikhail stops work and lets the archaeologists identify the remains. The men date back to the Second World War. He took a bullet with his body to protect his grandfather. Before losing consciousness, it thinks back to when his grandfather joined the army. At the age of 16, Pavel wanted to avenge his family's death. He joined the army, despite his mother's objections, but his fiancée was already pregnant. One day, during a battle against the Germans, the temperature was so low he couldn't even pull the trigger. German heavy machine guns opened fire, killing many of his comrades. As the machine gunner changed magazines, he rushed forward. The Germans greeted him in the middle of the road. The shooting was fierce. The squad leader asked three men to climb onto the roof of the building and set up the flag. When the soldiers saw the flag, they took heart. The other men climbed the stairs under cover. Pavel is in charge of climbing the building, but there are several more German soldiers on the roof. The three men decide to divide themselves between left, center and right and launch a surprise attack on the Germans. The Germans are all killed. Of the three, only Pavel was not killed. Mikhail, who followed, was impressed by his young grandfather. Pavel didn't feel sorry for himself. He took the flag from the arms of his fallen comrade and hung it on the mast. After driving back the enemy, Pavel saw Mikhail. Be yeah.
Ты кто ты? Дед, ты главное домой вернись. Живой. Пожалуйста. Тебя так ждут. Cal wanted to tell him the good news, his grandfather's fiancée was pregnant. What happiness for the young grandfather. Perhaps he would be able to return to his grandmother after the war. Perhaps he would live to join his grandmother when the war was over. Then his father wouldn't have to grow up in an orphanage. Unfortunately, Mikhail lost consciousness before he could finish his sentence. After the trip home, he entered Lisa's hospital room through the window, flowers in hand. He apologized for the truck incident and he kissed her. I hope her wakes up soon 